Daryl Stewart is the type of player that you're gonna get something great. Daryl Stewart yes. over the shoulder grab. You're gonna get something you're gonna say, well, <laughs> I wish I could do that. Nickname for myself, the spark plug. To be that player to, you know, go win games, uh, that's what I try to beat. Daryl brings a lot of energy to the team. He's always kind of a fireball. Every touchdown he scores, he's fired up. He's getting the crowd, the fans involved, and it's fun to go celebrate with him when he scores. He's not afraid to be that guy that's got to make that catch. And he wants the pressure on him, which I think is the mark of a great football player. I would rather my coach pull me off and say, you're doing too much, than have my coach push me to my, now you need to keep going. And that's how Coach D look at me. He'd be sad sometimes tapping me like, all right, I need you to ease a little bit. There's been a couple of times where I think he's called out some routes. He told some DBs what routes he was going to run, and Coach D probably got a little upset about him being a little flamboyant with that. He's just one of those guys that likes the competition. In high school, getting on the field, I used to be like, I, I don't have to stretch. I can just come out here and play. Making plays was second nature. When I got to college, now you got to learn coverages learn tendencies. Every year, he would take some more of the resources here at Michigan State and get a little bit better. He'd ask more questions offensively. So you just kept seeing him grow. I had a real big talk with my mom. And she told me, she was like, you know, your time is limited. Like, if you really want this, like, I really need you to go after this. And so I wish she really wanted me to do amazing things. So I took that and I ran with it. He's got him. Coach D always talks about overachieving. I think Daryl's overachieved, taking on the leadership and just being a presence on the offensive side. I think he's done an outstanding job of that. And he'd probably tell you first and foremost that he's got a lot more to get done. I'm from one of the best cities in the world that you can be from, Houston, Texas. I had to move a lot growing up. Honestly, I stay everywhere in Houston you can stay at. Daryl, he was a good kid, but ever since his dad passed, he's always been the father of the family. We all look up to him and we, we expect a lot from him. The whole ordeal with Hurricane Harvey, I was here at the moment in East Lansing. I'm calling my mom, I'm like, Ma, you don't think you should leave? She's like, I'm not leaving my house. We always hear this, so in the back of my mind, like, oh, ain't nothing gonna happen. So I didn't, I went to bed and didn't worry about it, but it happened. When Hurricane Harvey hit, I get a FaceTime call, and it's my mom, my sister, and, my, and they showing me my grandmother floating in her bed inside the apartment, and the water is just like constantly rising. I jump up and try to get everybody out. And by my mom being disabled, I couldn't just get her and pick her out. By the grace of God, somebody comes, like, help my family out, gets them to the third floor of the apartments. Seeing all this on FaceTime is, like, so surreal. I mean, you see it in the movies, and it's like, you know, not thinking it actually happened to you. We lost everything. And that's the first thing my mom was sad about because we felt like we was finally like getting to somewhere we was kind of getting stable and it was like lost everything. We were all separated. My sister-in-law got my two youngest kids. My mom went to my aunts and me and my daughter went and stayed with my son Jeremy. Daryl was texting and FaceTiming making sure everybody was all right. My dad, before he passed, that's one thing he always told me, you need to be the glue of the family and try to keep everybody united and for Hurricane Harvest is like to split us up. It was devastating. Seeing all my childhood memories, like in water and the places I used to play at, from that moment on, like I had to do something to try to like go back and help. Tyler Higby's from Houston. And we made a pact with each other, like, we're gonna go down here and fix our city. It felt good. It felt deserving. It felt like, man, I needed to do this, and I was happy to do it. From the Lee's family, we appreciate
appreciate this so, so much. We can't ever thank you enough. We just want to thank you for allowing us to fix your house. <laughs> and it made me honestly uh, grow two inches as a person. And I'm very happy that I went back. After the storm, we moved into this new house about three months afterwards. God has mysterious ways to getting things back on track and look at us now. I wish I could say things in life is not gonna you know, be bad, but things are gonna happen, unfortunately. But it's how you respond to adversity. I'm really looking forward to giving back to Houston, giving back to my family and whoever needs it.